Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. God used foreign kingdoms to bring judgment on his people, both in the kingdom of Israel in the north and in the kingdom of Judah in the south. But that did not mean that the kingdoms God used to bring judgment on his people were themselves above judgment. God used the kingdom of Assyria to bring judgment on the northern kingdom of Israel. And yet, because of Assyria's own pride and arrogance and violence and rebellion against the Lord, the Lord also promises that he will bring judgment on Assyria as well. Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff in their hands is my wrath. I will send him against a godless nation. I will command him to go against a people destined for my rage, to take spoils, to plunder, and to trample them down like clay in the streets. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he plans. It is his intent to destroy and to cut off many nations. For he says, Aren't all my commanders kings? Isn't Kalno like Carchemish? Isn't Hamath like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand seized the kingdoms of worthless images, kingdoms whose idols exceeded those of Jerusalem and Samaria, and as I did to Samaria and its worthless images, will I not also do to Jerusalem and its idols? But when the Lord finishes all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria for his arrogant acts and the proud look in his eyes. For he said, I have done this by my own strength and wisdom, for I am clever. I abolished the borders of nations and plundered their treasures. Like a mighty warrior, I subjected, subjugated the inhabitants. My hand has reached out as if into a nest to seize the wealth of the nations. Like one gathering abandoned eggs, I gathered the whole earth. No wing fluttered, no beak opened or chirped. Does an axe exalt itself about, above the one who chops with it? Does a saw magnify itself above the one who saws with it? It would be like a rod waving the one who lifts it. It would be like a staff lifting the one who isn't wood. Therefore, the Lord God of armies will inflict an emaciating disease on the well-fed of Assyria, and he will kindle a burning fire under its glory. Israel's light will become a fire, and its holy one a flame. In one day, it will burn and consume Assyria's thorns and thistles. He will completely destroy the glory of its forests and orchards as a sickness consumes a person. The remaining trees of its forests will be so few in number that a child could count them. On that day, the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no longer depend on the one who struck them, but they will faithfully depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. The remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. Israel, even if your people were as numerous as the sands of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction has been decreed. Justice overflows, for throughout the land the Lord God of armies is carrying out a destruction that was decreed. Therefore, the Lord God of armies says this, My people who dwell in Zion, do not fear Assyria, though they strike you with a rod and raise their staff over you as the Egyptians did. In just a little while my wrath will be spent and my anger will turn to their destruction. And the Lord of armies will brandish a whip against him as he did when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb, and he will raise his staff over the seas as he did in Egypt. On that day, his burden will fall from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because your neck will be too large. Assyria has come to Ayath and has gone through Migran, storing their equipment at Michmash. They crossed over at the ford saying, we will spend the night at Geba. The people of Ramah are trembling. Those at Gibeah of Saul have fled. 
Cry aloud, daughter of Galim. Listen, Laisha. Anathoth is miserable. Madmena has fled. The inhabitants of Gibim have sought refuge. Today, the Assyrians will stand at Nob, shaking their fists at the mountain of daughter Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Look, the Lord God of armies will chop off the branches with terrifying power, and the tall trees will be cut down, the high trees felled. He is clearing the thickets of the forest with an axe, and Lebanon, with its majesty, will fall. We now turn to James's letter, where he talks to us about pride and humility. What is the source of wars and fights among you? Don't they come from your passions that wage war within you? You desire and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Or do you think it's without reason that the scripture says, the spirit he made to dwell in us envies intensely, but he gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Don't criticize one another, brothers and sisters. Anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will travel to such and such a city and spend a year there and do business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring what your life will be. For you are like a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.